Okay, good morning. Uh, let us get started. Uh, so, we looked at uh, the diffusion equation, <coughs> we looked at the uh, steady uh, diffusion equation in two dimensions yesterday. Uh, this was del dot gamma grad phi plus S phi equals 0. Okay. Um, we have obtained an equation that is basically a p phi p equals sigma a and b phi and b plus some b where n b is your east, west, north and south. Okay. And then the central coefficient a p is again sigma a and b right. That is what we have um, written down yesterday. Now, um, we have to discuss the boundary conditions in today's lecture. So, coming to the boundary conditions, uh, you can have three types of boundary conditions. You could specify uh, the value of the dependent variable itself. So, that is you can specify phi equals some constant. Uh, this type of boundary condition is known as what? A Dirichlet boundary condition. Uh, you can also specify uh, the gradient of the dependent function, okay, dependent variable. So, that is partial phi, partial n could be specified with a as a constant. So, this would be this is known as a Neumann boundary condition, okay. And can you have any other type of boundary condition? You can have mixed boundary condition, that means you can specify a combination of Dirichlet and Neumann that could be. For example, a times some phi plus b times some partial phi partial equals some c3. Okay, so this is called a mixed boundary condition. So let us take a look at each of these boundary conditions and how will that changes our discretization in in today's lecture. Okay, yeah, sure. So c1 can be a function of space, right? In fact, uh, c1 can be a function of space or it can be a function of uh, temperature and things like that. Okay, essentially uh, uh, not temperature, even can be a function of let us say uh, of the space x bar because temperature is again here. Now again um, for example here this could be variable as well, right that is true. So I have just written it as some constant but that is need not be a just a constant, okay. We will come to that, we will not incorporate a constant there as such, okay. Uh, but what we call it as uh, phi equals uh, some uh, phi on the boundary will be specified. Uh, how phi b varies with let us say with the space or with time would be specified by the user right or by you who is kind of simplifying the problem okay. Other questions? Oh, okay. So, let us look at uh, Dirichlet boundary condition. So, essentially we have uh, we have the domain. I'm taking, let's say, a left side of the domain as my uh, boundary. So this is my boundary B, and we have uh, this is the P cell, this is east cell, this is north cell, and this is the south cell. Okay, uh, and we also have uh, the boundary that is here. This is, let's say, B. Okay, and we specify what is. Uh, um, the value this is phi b okay so phi b is what we are specifying it could be again a function of time and it could be different on different boundaries like as we said okay now what about the distances so the distances are um, so this this uh, p cell has a distance of let's say uh, delta y in here and delta x in here okay and uh, the distance between the cell centroids is delta y north and delta y south and uh, this distance is now del x e between uh, cell centered of the p cell and the east cell. And uh, of course, up till now we had this del delta x by 2 as our uh, distance between the p cell and the boundary cell right in the 1D cases. Here I am going to call this distance as simply as delta x b okay. okay. So, I am going to just call it as uh, uh, delta x b. Now, we realize that delta x b is actually delta x e upon could be essentially delta x by 2 right. So, 
So remember that two factor would, would not come in now because we have now removed it we just call it as delta x b fine ok that is what we have now uh, of course we will not go through the, all the steps rather we will write down the, uh, the discrete equation. Uh, what is our discrete equation that was uh, gamma east anybody remembers gamma east let us say a east that was delta y right gamma east a east uh, partial phi partial x on east minus gamma west a west partial phi partial x on the west plus gamma north a north partial phi partial y on the north minus gamma south a south partial phi partial y on the south plus we had uh, sc plus sp phi p times delta v or delta x delta y equals 0 right. Now, we realize that the, the west face for the p cell is the same as what same as the b right the boundary cell the boundary phase. So, I can write uh, the minus gamma w a w partial phi partial x on w as minus gamma b a b partial phi partial x of b. So, that is the b cell. Now, how do you how do I evaluate uh, the flux on the b phase what I got here what would this be minus gamma b a b times what is partial phi partial x on b phase what are the values I have. I have only uh, phi available at p and phi defined at b right, but phi b is it known or unknown it is known right because it is given to you this is known uh, phi p is of course unknown ok phi p is an unknown. So, if I were to calculate this then I would write this as phi p minus phi b upon delta x b ok. So, this is where you have to remember that the two factor is not there earlier we had this as delta x e by 2 or something where you would got another 2 there ok. Now, that is absorbed into delta x b fine uh, the distance between the near boundary cell and the boundary phase centroid ok. Fine ok we do not have to uh, we would not go into um, the details here rather um, what would be now a b what is the value of a b minus gamma b no ok uh, we, we do not have. So, what, what is a magnitude of a b on this face delta y ok. So, this would be minus gamma b delta y times phi p minus phi b upon delta x b right that is what we have. Now, of course, you know how to uh, write expressions for these terms right these terms do you know what is a e a e is delta y uh, partial phi partial x is nothing but phi east minus phi p by delta x e and so on. So, we know all of those uh, only for this term we have now just derived how to do it. Uh, now, where will the contribution from these terms go? So, the contribution is uh, gamma b delta y by delta x b that will go to one term will go to phi p coefficient other term will go to b because phi b is known. So, this is known. So, entire term will go to b and there will be contribution to a p right do you see that ok. Now, then let me write down the final equation I will write I will not write down each of the equations. So, essentially we have a p phi p equals a east phi east plus would there be a, a west phi west no right because we do not have a west cell right. So, this would be there will be a north phi north plus a south phi south plus b right. There is no west because we do not have uh, we do not have a coefficient for phi east right because phi east does not sorry we do not have a coefficient for phi west as a result we do not have uh, any coefficient for a w right. Okay. Now, this is what we get all right then what is a east if you go back in your uh, nodes what you get is a east is gamma east delta y by del x e what would be a north gamma north delta x by del y north what would be a south gamma south delta x by delta y south ok. Now, what about uh, uh, so, we, we, we call this another coefficient as a b right a b is how much gamma b delta y by del x b right. So, that 2 factor is built in here 
ok if you follow follow me. Then what about uh, A P? A P will have contributions from where? From east, north, south and from the from the boundary as well right and from the source also ok. So, what would be A P then? A east, A north, A south and A B minus S P delta x delta y. Do you see that? Ok, I have not down, written down I hope you kind of follow me on this. Essentially, we have written down the linear profile assumption for all the fluxes partial phi, partial x, partial phi, partial y on all the four phases. In this particular case, it is only the three phases east, north, south on the west phase we have already derived. Now, plug all of those back in and then rearrange the terms to get A p phi p equals uh, sigma a n b phi n b plus b ok and then we are writing down the equations uh, the coefficients uh, right. All right, then what about b? What all terms will going to be? Phi b term will go that will be a b times minus would there be a minus? This would be a plus is not it? So, phi p has a coefficient with a minus, but phi p is always sent to the right hand side. So, that is why it becomes plus. What about the coefficient for phi b? It will be plus right you have minus times minus. So, it will be plus and it will stay on the left hand side right. So, what will be b? a b phi b plus or minus? Plus right a b phi b plus plus s c delta x delta y. So, you have to kind of check these expressions ok I have written it down you have to make sure this is correct. Fine is it ok? Ok now let us talk about uh, Scarborough criteria. Uh, what is Scarborough criteria saying here? Is my A p equal to sigma n b or is it greater? So, what are the neighbors here for A p for p? East, north, south is b a neighbor? No, we, we do not call it a neighbor y because phi b ok it is a phase ok, uh, but still I have this uh, I still have a b phi b built in uh, I still have this uh, let us say a b coming in here is not it then why do I why do I not call it as a neighbor because phi b is known or unknown phi b is known. So, if you write down the matrix in the in the particular row would you have an entry for uh, phi b you will not because phi b on the right hand side. So, essentially you do not have right. So, the neighbors are nothing but everything that comes up on that particular row of the matrix right and only the unknowns that come up are the east, north and south that is all only these three. So, now when I say n b what am I saying? I am only saying that it is east, north, south we are not talking about b here. Now, is it now uh, greater or uh, equal or what? Let us say we do not have source terms ok. Let us say source is 0 this is 0 this is 0, but we still have a Dirichlet boundary condition in that case is a p equal sigma a n b or is it lesser or greater? Greater right it is greater by what amount? by a b ok. So, it is greater by a b uh, value ok. So, it satisfies now Scarborough criteria in inequality ok satisfies in inequality. We do not worry about the satisfaction in equality because all the interior cells anyway satisfy in inequality ok fine. Um, Let us say we do not have source term then uh, is the value of uh, phi p bound by the neighbors? So, the question is let us say source is 0, source is 0 is uh, phi p bound by uh, I would call it as uh, neighbors in a different context ok. Is it bound by uh, I would call phi east, phi b, phi north and phi south is this true or not? For example, you go back here uh, we have to check two things one is is a p a sum of all the coefficients next one is is 
this coming out to be a fractions right. So, a p is it a sum of all the neighbors Ni neighbors in a sense I am considering the face value as well right. So, that is a b a east a north a south and then what will happen to phi p phi p would be there is a a b uh, phi b coming from b right. So, essentially this will be a it will be bounded by the neighboring values right it will be bounded by the three neighboring cells and the face value that we specify do you see that yeah because b contains now a b phi b if you are going to plug this back in here uh, then what you are going to get is phi p equals sigma a and b by a p which are all sum up to 1 because of this fact right ok. So, we can conclude that uh, phi p the near boundary cell value is bounded by the three phase uh, neighbors and the phase value that we have specified ok fine question still here oh I have not I have just as assumed it to be 0 it need not be 0 in, in case if it is not 0 then is it does it satisfy Scarborough it does ok. If source is not 0 will it be bounded by the uh, cell values and the neighbors it will not be right it can be greater than or less than it can be anything depends on the source or the sink ok. Other questions? No, ok. Let us move on to uh, Neumann boundary condition. So, in a Neumann boundary condition, what do we specify? We specify the gradient of the dependent variable. So, that means uh, we are specifying. So, my setting remains the same p east uh, north west and then we specify what is. Uh, so, this is uh, a b ok uh, the faces are east uh, boundary north face and south face and we are applying a heat flux boundary condition that is q b ok. So, q b is now what is known or unknown known right you specify an I 1 boundary condition you know what is q b ok. The, the remaining uh, delta x delta y for the p cell and the distances delta x e delta x b uh, delta y north delta y south remain the same as before ok we know where they are delta x b delta x e and these are all the delta y north and delta y south ok. All right. Uh, now, let us write down the equation again ok. So, we know the discrete equation that is uh, gamma east a east partial phi partial x east minus gamma west I am writing it as gamma b a b partial phi partial x b plus we have gamma north a north partial phi partial y north minus gamma south a south partial phi partial y south plus s c plus s p phi p times uh, delta x delta y equals 0 ok. Now, let us concentrate on the second term that is the minus gamma b a b partial phi partial x b ok. So, what is q? q is nothing but minus gamma grad phi evaluate b dotted with i right that is my q that I have specified let us call it as q b that is minus gamma grad phi evaluated on the face b dotted with i that is my uh, heat flux vector that we have specified. What will this amount to this will be how much this will be minus gamma b what is grad phi b dot i partial phi partial x b right that is all that is my q b. Then uh, can I substitute uh, for this term for this term from this known value I can right. So, what would this equation look like if I substitute this it will be the same as before gamma east a east partial phi partial x e what will the second term be minus gamma b a b partial phi partial x b out of which minus gamma b partial phi partial x b is nothing but q right. So, what remains is a b and what is the value of a b delta y. So, this will be plus q times delta y plus the remaining terms are gamma n a n partial phi partial y naught minus gamma south a south partial phi partial y south plus s c plus s p phi p 
times delta x delta y equals 0 right. So, far so good. Now, because we have specified a heat flux boundary condition the flux term that is partial phi partial x b is now completely wiped out right it just got replaced with q b. Now, as a result what happened earlier we used to have two contributions coming from here right either one going to the b one going to p or if this was not a boundary it would have gone into w and p right. Now, all these things are gone right because we just replaced it with q which is known right. As a result now can you write a discrete equation for this. Now, you can write a discrete equation now where will q times del delta y will go delta y will go b right because this is known this will go into b term this will go into b term. Uh, now, what will contribute to the coefficient a p what, what, what coefficients will contribute a east will it contribute it will contribute of course yeah because it will come from here a north yes a south and then the source term that is all ok. Now, now let us write down that equation let us say we plug in to all the algebra we will write a p phi p equals a east phi east plus a north phi north plus a south phi south plus b. Of course, what is a east a is gamma east uh, delta y by del x e a north is gamma north delta x by del y north a south is gamma south delta x by del y south. Now, the important point is uh, what is uh, uh, a p a p is what a east plus a north ok a south minus s p delta x delta y anything else nothing ok. What about b s c delta x delta y minus or plus plus because it stays on the left hand side itself right only the p is gone to the right hand side of course, we are writing it um, in the reverse way right. So, this will be plus or minus plus plus q times what delta y that is your b ok. So, let, let us call q as q b ok because we say this is a boundary heat flux that is specified ok. So, this is q b a p is known ok that is good question still now right or if you do not follow all you have to do is go back and put in the flux terms and then just derive it ok. If you do it once for Dirichlet you would get it for everything else it is very straightforward ok. Um, now, let us say few comments let us say we have a source is 0 source is 0 then what happens to a p is a p uh, equals or greater than sigma a and b equals right if source is 0 it is only a sum of a east a west and a sorry a east a north and a south only these three terms will come ok fine. Uh, so, it is only satisfies Scarborough in what equality ok. So, Scarborough is uh, satisfied uh, in equality ok. Uh, that means, if you have all Neumann boundary conditions will you ever satisfy Scarborough in inequality you will not ok. We have discussed this thing. So, um, then let us say if you have source equals 0 and uh, q b is also equal to 0 that means, you have an insulated boundary condition and you have no source then is a phi p bounded by the neighbors it is right because b is 0. So, as a result uh, a p is sum of a east, east north south and this is 0 if we say source is 0 then phi p is bounded by the neighbors east uh, north and south right. So, ok p p is uh, bounded by phi east phi north and phi south. In case if source or q b are not 0 then will it be bounded it will not be bounded and it is it is possible right. If you have a source term your phi p can be higher than the neighbors and similarly if you have a heat flux boundary condition you are adding heat on one phase the temperature for the near boundary cell can be higher than the other cells ok that is physically correct. Ok. Now, uh, what we are interested in is uh, we have now 
obtain an expression we will put in this equation into the gauss seidel or any other solution technique that we would use but we have not actually calculated what is the value of phi on the boundary right because somebody has told you that this is the heat flux i am applying but in most cases you might be interested in calculating what is the temperature or what is the phi on the boundary itself right so we should be able to calculate that from the heat flux boundary conditions right if it was this this lay we know that value if it was now one we should be able to calculate from the numerical technique so now we will just calculate uh, uh, phi b value uh, once uh, we have converged uh, the solution okay once the solution is converged okay then you have a converged value for phi p right from there you can calculate what is phi b value how do you calculate you just uh, apply the same boundary condition that you have started off with that is uh, what was the definition for q b minus gamma b partial phi partial x b right that is what we have um, this is a minus gamma b phi p minus phi b upon delta x b right q b is uh, known heat flux is known now uh, phi p now once you have converged your solver is phi p known right it is known okay delta x b and gamma b are also known what do we have to do calculate phi b that is all okay. So, what will be phi b phi b would be q b plus gamma b by delta x b times phi p equals gamma b by delta x b times phi b. So, your phi b is the value of the dependent variable on the boundary is nothing but q b plus gamma b by delta x b times uh, phi p divided by gamma b by delta x b ok. You can calculate what is the value of dependent variable on the boundary for a Neumann boundary condition that is given ok. Questions till now. So, we have covered uh, Dirichlet boundary condition and uh, Neumann boundary condition ok. Questions any clarifications? No very clear ok. So, you can easily implement all right. Uh, so, the next one we have is the uh, mixed boundary condition. What would be a um, typical um, physical uh, application where you get mixed boundary conditions? Any for example, Dirichlet you can tell me that ok I have a heater which maintains at constant temperature right. Neumann you can say ok I have insulated it there is a heat flux 0 or I have some kind of a flux that I am applying through uh, some kind of a heater then that is Neumann boundary condition where exactly do you get this kind of mixed boundary condition is it just out of curiosity we are doing it or do you get it somewhere. Phase change no phase change is is what constant temperature right constant temperature ok sorry convection right convection. So, if you have convection the kind of boundary condition you would apply is a mixed boundary condition right. Why do we say that essentially we what we are looking at we are looking at a boundary condition that is a a uh, linear combination of Dirichlet and Neumann that is we are looking at A times phi plus B times partial phi partial n equals some constant C ok. So, if I have convection what do we have? We have uh, Q B which is uh, let us say minus gamma grad phi on the boundary dotted with I equals equals what? Equals H times the heat transfer coefficient H times phi infinity that is for the fluid that is outside right minus phi right. Let us say if I have a boundary this is maintained at phi b right we are looking at conduction. So, this is some kind of a solid and we have uh, some flow that is happening here. So, this is uh, at uh, T infinity right. So, there is a heat flux that is flowing in this direction. Um, so, this is what we get. Now, ok fine I have said convection is the application, but is it now similar to this equation or not or they are not related. It is similar it is the same thing right if I rewrite this thing if I call this as phi b this is phi b then I can write this equation as uh, 
bring h phi b to the left hand side we have h times phi b uh, minus gamma grad phi b uh, dotted with i equals h times phi infinity. This is similar to a times phi plus b times partial phi partial n equals some c right this is the same thing. So, if we have convection on a solid wall then what we are talking about is a, a mixed boundary condition ok. All right. So, how do we deal with the finite volume method if we have a mixed boundary condition uh, that we will see in the next class fine all right.